Dunk Beat. What's going on, guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Thursday. Hope you're having an awesome week so far. And oh no! Oh no, it's red! Sell! Run for the hills! Well, this is to be expected. We had a lot of days of straight green, so of course we're gonna have a little bit of red. This is absolutely normal. This is completely healthy. No reason to freak out. Um, you know, I mean, if it goes substantially lower, then we may have some some something else to talk about. But right now, we're actually all right. Now, before we get on, guys, I do want to say that uh, Crypto Oracle Clothing has given me a box of shirts to give away. So today we have this pretty awesome uh, T-shirt right here. It's like a uh, like a Bitcoin sun with like an Egyptian dude kind of looking at it. So if you guys are interested, you know what to do. Just drop me a comment below. Also, you enter to win a Ledger Nano S anyway, so why not take the opportunity? Now, before we move on, I hate doing this, but I want to point out that this YouTube account, it has eight subscribers. They have two videos uploaded from eight years ago. Apparently, they were unboxing some G-Shock uh, watches. Well, they have my logo and they have my name. So I don't know what this means. This could be nothing or it could be a problem. So if you guys start seeing comments, uh, you know, saying you won something or asking you to send money or telling you to send an email, do not listen to that. I don't do stuff like that, okay? If I ever give away anything on my channel, it will be in the actual video itself, never below in the comments, okay? Just wanted to point that out, which is another reason why I can't wait to get 100K subscribers because then I get the little verified check and I get to feel special. So, uh... One can hope, one can hope, right? So anyway, having a look at what's going on, we did, let me give it a refresh live. How are we looking here? All right, so we lost about $3 billion pretty quick, happened pretty fast. Overall though, Bitcoin really only fell 0.89% uh, globally if we have a look at it. Now, I wanted to talk about some of the uh, bigger gainers today. So we did have Ravencoin that had some news from ADF, uh, VFN International Finance Award, most exciting new coin. And we also had uh, you know Tezos completing their historic first blockchain vote. So obviously, if we have a look at the gainers today, you do see both Ravencoin and Tezos are up. We also have Maximine Coin, MOAC, Verge, Loom Network, ABB, BC coin. People love their ABBC. Uh, KuCoin shares and Ontology actually w was up a lot this morning. Um, I don't really, it, it took, like, if we look at it, it, it went up and then it kind of just instantly just sort of sold off. So I don't really don't know what that was all about, but um, yeah, so it's been a pretty exciting morning. There's been a lot of things happening. Now, if we have a look at the Bitcoin chart, basically what happened was we broke 4,000. We know that. So that was a good psychological barrier. And then we were finally Finally getting above this resistance of 4,045, we got up to 4,055 and just rejected and went down. We went so far down that we actually broke below this support, the 3,944, but as you can see, we didn't stay there for long, hence why we refer to these lines as support, right? So currently, um, to be like extremely bearish, I think we'd have to break below this again because we don't have really anything supporting us in this channel. So if we do break below that, I think we're gonna go down to 3,766. I'm not trying to like look on the bad side of things. I'm just saying we don't really have anything else in here. But here's the thing. How long have you been accumulating? I mean, you know, when have you been buying Bitcoin recently? I mean, have you been dollar cost averaging down here? Because pretty much if you've been buying Bitcoin for, you know, over the past month and, you know, yeah, past month and a half, you're fine. So you're up. I mean, this is normal market behavior. So this is to be expected. But the one thing that I do want to point out is the fear, greed uh, index. If you guys know what's up with that, obviously right now it's pretty high. We're sitting at 62. So the last time that we had a major move from this was basically, well, we have a move that correlates all the time, but look at this. We had February 24th. The, uh, the, the, the greed index was at 69. So currently we're at 62. So that's only seven points away. Now, I just want to point out to you what happened on February 24th. Well, yeah, you're not going to like it, but this is it right here. This is the candle uh, we touched up here. And we had a massive, massive sell-off that day. In fact, uh, what's the what was the percentage on that? We went from 18 to 5. Ooh, wow, that was a big one. That was a big one, guys. So just be careful. Just be careful. Going to point that out. But I don't want to be negative. I don't want to be negative, but I just got to be realistic about it. So, um, you know, you do have guys saying that shorting here would be idiotic. According to C3PO Wookie Mood, you can come sort of read his... Uh, 
reasoning right here. I'm not going to get too much into it. But as you can see, the shorts are down. This is actually the Bitcoin shorts on Bitfinex. So um, they're down. So just kind of note that as well. Now, the other thing too, Ryan Selkis, he pointed out, you know, I'd be extremely surprised if the bottom wasn't in for Bitcoin. If you've been on the sidelines, what are you waiting for? If not now, if you're a long-term bull, the five-year EV is 25 to 50 X. And if you're going to wait uh, for a time for entry, like why, you know, why wait for an extra 20%, right? So basically that's what he's saying over there. Now, if we do have a look at this, obviously, you know, having a little bit of a down, you know, a sell-off is all right, because realistically, we've still been supported by the 200 weekly moving average, an absolute worst case scenario. Like, let's say we even break this little kind of, you know, support we've been having here, even though it's only had two points of contact, you know, worst case scenario, if we were to just plummet right now, 3,000, 395, 3,400 is pretty much where I'm calling the bottom short term. I don't really see any reason why we'd go lower than that, but you never know. Bitcoin is a, it's a crazy, crazy place and it can always surprise you. Now, what I'm... Omkar Godball, now he's our favorite uh, TA guy who doesn't actually own any cryptocurrency, but he does point to some similarities, so let's entertain this for a second. Now, he talks about the similarities between the 2014 to 2015 uh, market and the 2017 and 2018 market, so we'll just pull this up right here. So as we can see here, the price action seen over the last 14 months looks very similar to that seen in 2014 and early 2015. The previous bear market had stalled with the 14-week RSI hitting oversold levels below 30 in January of 2015. Similarly, the sell-off from the record high of 20,000 hit in December of 2017 also ran out of steam with the RSI falling below 30 in December of 2018. So if history repeats itself, Bitcoin might see a sustained channel breakout later this year. So that is what is going on with the price and we're just going to have to keep our eyes on it. So right now, you know, we seem to have kind of steadied out, but you know, we'll keep our eyes on it moving forward. Now, I do want to talk about some fundamentals because they go hand in hand, right? So we have the technology conglomerate Cisco, you may be familiar with them, recently released a new report on blockchain and in this report, they discussed how they see the technology being used, what the advantages of blockchain is and what financial impact they expect blockchain to have on the market. So this might kind of get your hopes up a little bit, maybe get you excited, even though we had that little bit of a sell-off. So the Cisco report predicts that by 2027, 10% of the global GDP will be stored on blockchain. Currently, the global GDP is about $80 trillion. Accounting for growth and new value that blockchain is expected to add to the economy, global GDP could easily be $100 trillion by 2027. $100 trillion. That is massive. So... If Cisco's report turns out to be accurate, that would mean a $10 trillion crypto market is only eight years away. So do you know what that would do to the price of the total? All crypto, if we had a $10 trillion crypto market. Well, let's give this a quick refresh because we did lose. We did lose some money this morning, right? We, we had a little bit of sell-off. So currently we're at $138 billion. So if we were to get to $10 trillion, that would be well over 70x. I think it'd be like 71x or 72x. That's crazy. So worrying about the short term of, oh no, you know, this coin fell 5%. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We still have so much bright, bright futures ahead. Now here's an interesting thing. This came out from the European Central Bank. They published a statement regarding Bitcoin as not being a monetary asset. In fact, they said, Bitcoin is not money. Well, that's interesting. It's not money. Okay. Well, you have crypto analyst Joseph Young. You guys might be familiar with him. And he suggests that the bank has released a statement as per the crypto assets being unprintable. Interesting, right? So though this is an absurd manner to qualify a monetary asset as money, the bank does praise the technology in the, in the, that works behind Bitcoin, kind of the whole blockchain, not Bitcoin thing, right? So he went on to say the European bank does not consider Bitcoin as money for some specific reason. The reason that they cannot print more of Bitcoin on their own is the one I'm afraid. Anthony Pompliano, you guys know him from Morgan Creek. So he basically said that 
He's sure that the day is near when people will see Bitcoin entirely incorporated into the system. He says this will obviously be because of the upper hand that cryptos have over the fiat system. He suggests that the banking system has turned archaic to, quote, the sloppy, unsafe infrastructure of the banking system is the primary reason Bitcoin needs to take over. And if that's not enough, let's look at some actual statistics from Silvergate Bank, which bills itself as the leading provider of innovative financial infrastructure solutions and services to participants in the digital currency industry. Whew. Okay. They've disclosed in a preliminary prospectus filed with the US SEC that despite the bearish conditions in the Bitcoin market, its number of crypto industry clients actually surged in 2018. So by the end of the year, they revealed that they had 542 cryptocurrency related customers. This was an increase of 122% from 2017, where they only had 244. So that was per the prospectus. So total deposits also increased as well by approximately 8% from 1.46 billion to 1.58 billion. So among some of its customers, they have exchanges as well, which deposited uh, you know, upwards of you know, 500 plus million. Some of the crypto firms that Silvergate counts as clients include Genesis, Circle, Bitstamp. Other clients include Kinetic Capital, Polychain, uh, Zapo, you have the firm behind Pax Stablecoin, Paxos. So this is pretty incredible, guys. So that is some good news coming out as well. Now, big news. Everyone's excited over this. You probably already heard about it. But, you know, CEO of Twitter, Jack, he came out. He says, Bitcoin Twitter, crypto Twitter. Square is hiring three to four crypto engineers and one designer to work full time on open source contributions to the Bitcoin crypto ecosystem. And now they have Square Crypto. So if you click it, you can see right here, oh, running Bitcoin. I like how that's the first uh, tweet, which I've liked and retweeted from quite some time ago. But getting back to this, basically, you can see that they are, you know, looking to pay people in crypto, which is pretty cool. And a lot of people are getting excited over this. So, I mean, I'm not going to go too into this, but uh, oh, got to love the uh, crypto meme central. Some heroes don't wear capes. Thanks, Jack. But you've probably heard about this story already, so we're not going to go too into that one. But I do want to also point out that, on a side note, Square registered $166 million in annual Bitcoin revenue in 2018. The company achieved $52 million in Bitcoin sales for Q4, surpassing Q3 by $9 million and Q2 by more than $15 million. So numbers do not lie. Now, let's talk about some positive stuff in the U.S. So on March 18th, you had Rahm Emanuel, Chicago's mayor, took to the stage of local fintech gathering to make a mention of cryptocurrencies and blockchain. So he formally served as President Obama's chief of staff, remarked that for nations facing financial imbroglios, namely Iran and Venezuela, harnessing crypto assets could be a good escape mechanism. He went on to explain, one day, somebody's going to figure out whether that's Argentina 10 years from now, five years from now, how to use cryptocurrencies to stay alive when they're facing a financial crisis. And then you're going to find out that this moment has arrived. Well, I think that this moment has already arrived. I think we're seeing a lot of these different countries using it as a means of actually being able to survive. Right. And, um, this kind of, uh, sort of mimics on an article that came out from Alex Gladstein back at the end of December. And it's why Bitcoin matters for freedom. Now it's very, uh, Kind of a long article to go into right now live, but um, yeah, it pretty much summarizes exactly what we've been talking about. And uh, long story short, this is pretty much it: the government banning Bitcoin. It's pretty much how pretty much how it goes down, guys. So moving on, we got some awesome Lightning Network news. So blockchain development company Lightning Labs has announced the initial release of the Lightning off ramp Lightning Loop. What the heck is this? Let's figure. Let's dive in. So the loop out function attempts to solve an issue which can affect Lightning Network users. The post explains after having received a certain amount via the Lightning Network, users can sometimes not receive more until he or she moves the funds on chain, right? We do have limits, okay? It's not perfect. We're getting there, though. Since the solution is non-custodial, the funds can be moved onto any chosen address, such as an exchange, a hot wallet, a cold wallet, or really whatever, okay? But here's the thing. Um, you know, transactions are limited to 0.01 Bitcoin at the time. And, uh, yeah, if we give this a quick refresh, I know we lost a little bit of value. That's about $39 and 60 cents, which really isn't that impressive, but it's a start. Still, while this initial alpha version release focuses on the loop out feature, 
The announcement promises that a future loop in function enables users to move on-chain Bitcoin into the Lightning Network will be added in the next version. This function will reportedly enable users to refill their Lightning Network channels with their own wallets or from exchanges. So still good news, still good news. We will take it. Also, no, I do not want to update my computer. Remind me uh, tomorrow. This thing always does this to me. Anyway, so Redditors have called out a reported scam on Augur. I'm not going to go into this article. I'm just going to let you know that this article exists. The reason being, there's only 51 daily active users on Augur. So if you just so happen to be one of those 51 people and you're also watching this video, link below. Everything you need to know is there. Okay. Now we do have Siren Labs, the creator of the Finny blockchain smartphone announced today that they are partnering with my ether wallet. So the community can purchase Finny using uh, my ether wallet through their mobile and web platforms. And Siren Labs will also allow my ether wallet users to enjoy Siren OS cold storage as well. Personally, I use my crypto. I find the ex uh, experience to be a little bit better. But um, they're basically the same thing for the most part. So we also had this interview that came out with Vitalik Buterin. Um, and if you guys are interested, I'll drop the link below for the whole video. It's about 40 minutes long. Um, personally, I actually didn't have a chance to, to watch it yet because I just saw this this morning, but they did kind of highlight it. So this is some of the key takeaways. As far as the big problems, he said my top three at this point are probably scalability, privacy, and usability. So scalability for Ethereum, currently Ethereum does about 15 transactions per second. He says in reality, we need around 100,000. So they're quite a ways off from that. He also goes on to say there are the two major kinds of strategies that they're looking for. One is layer on scaling and the other is layer two scaling. And, you know, he goes on to talk about sharding, et cetera. So, yeah, then they talk about Bitcoin, actually. And he, he had a little bit of an opinion on Bitcoin. He said, if Bitcoin wishes to just be a store of value, then realistically, it's probably fine, though I think they should switch to proof of stake. If they want to actually be a currency that people use for transactions, then I do think base layer scaling. Uh, I'm not too sure if I agree on the proof of stake for Bitcoin thing. Um, maybe. I mean, I know Richard Hart, he's got his opinion. That's why he's doing everything with Hex, right? That's proof of stake thing. So I don't know, could be wrong. You know, maybe, maybe uh, you know, all this mining is just killing electricity, but I don't know, it's really damn secure. You know, I mean, the Bitcoin network's pretty much never been hacked. Um, I mean, unless you, you know, accidentally left your keys out, but the, the actual blockchain itself has never been hacked. And it's been up for like 99.93% like of its existence. So pretty incredible. Um, he also talked about Ethereum 2.0, the highly anticipated update to the network that will bring sharding and Casper protocol. But you know, sadly, Casper and sharding have been delayed until 2021. So we still have a long way to go, guys. We still have a long way to go, but I'll drop that video for you below. Also, some people were pointing out some changes that are being or have been made to the API of Binance. It looks like they're going to introduce margin trading at some point. So this isn't really a surprise. They, they, they said they were going to do this a while ago. And, uh, you know, they said spot trading, then margin trading. And then eventually they had said potentially futures as well. So I wanted to just point that out. We also have SBI Holdings, a Ripple partner, looking to work closely with them. So they've developed um, a new thing called Money Tap. Um, I'm not going to go into detail. You pretty much know how something like this works. But the thing I do want to point out is that currently they're they're looking at using X Current, not X Rapid. So that is something to note. Um, you know, if you're an XRP holder. And also, finally, I put this at the end because who really cares at this point? But obviously, due to the government shutdown, Backed has been pushed back <laughs> again. So yeah, they say even if we're lucky. And word came out that they have approved the platform. There's still a 30-day window for the public to have the say on the proposal. So we could be looking now at back being pushed all the way back to May. So more time for the institutions to accumulate, eh? Did you guys watch my video yesterday? So could be, guys, could be. So, uh, but let's not end on a sad note. Let's end on a happy note. And today we have this Bitcoin car not as cool as the Bitcoin car from yesterday, but a Bitcoin car nonetheless, at least as far as when the flags are in the windows it is. So that being said, guys, pretty short video today. I uh, didn't really want to keep you guys. Let's see. Let's see what Bitcoin's doing, actually. It's still stabilized. Guys, keep your eyes on it. You know, here's the thing. You know, had somebody placed a sell order in here, which, you know, that, that would have seemed like the logical thing to do. What would have happened? You would have got completely liquidated. 
right? So you basically would have sold your Bitcoin. All this would have happened. And unless you were quick enough to buy back in, you would have pretty much just lost your Bitcoin. So just keep that in mind, guys. Pay close attention. Okay. How is this going to affect alt season? I'm not 100% sure right now, considering Bitcoin dominance is a lot higher than it was yesterday. I'm going to keep my eyes on it. I'm not Nostradamus. I still think that some of these altcoins are going to outperform Bitcoin, but I think today they might be getting hit a little bit hard just because of the Bitcoin dumping, right? So that is it for the day, guys. Bitcoin car, Bitcoin car. Okay. No, before we go, I want to say thank you again for everyone that's been, you know, sub- uh, supporting the channel, uh, liking, subscribing, commenting, uh, leaving Brave Browser tips. Even though sometimes people tell me it says I'm not a registered publisher. I am. I don't know what that is. It's an error message. I definitely get everything. Thank you so much, guys. If you haven't downloaded Brave Browser yet, you can use my link below. $5 in basic attention tokens. Also, guys, once again, Ledger Nano X is pushed back. So anybody ordering now, you're not going to be getting those until April. In fact, I'm still waiting on mine. I'm very excited for it. Hopefully, I get it today or tomorrow or something. But, you know, once again, if you want to use my link, that does help the channel out. And that's it for today, guys. So thank you so much for coming back, uh, you know, for another video. I really appreciate it. everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting. Uh, sorry about that little, uh, little dip this morning. <laughs> what are you going to do, guys? It happens. Um, You know, I've given you my key levels to look at. If we fall below again and we go lower than that wick that we that we had, then I think it's going to be bad news. It's going to be real bad news. And then we're looking, then we're looking bearish short term. Okay. But let's not get negative here. We don't know. Let's see how the next 24 hours plays out. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.